the best armors in small lands i'm going to show you everything you need to know about every armor set you can craft all the ingredients and resources top tips about how to get them and what the benefits are let's go there are currently 11 different arm sets in the game. Some, as you might expect with a game of seasons, give you more protection against the cold, and others are meant to be better for summer. Some will also give you more abilities to go around and hover and actually glide through the world, and others are gonna be more about just giving you protection. So do leave a like if you find this useful. Do check out all the rest of the small land content. I've completed the game absolutely 100% up to this point, so no one knows it better. So you basic start a gear this is the traveler set it's not going to offer much protection it's literally just to stop you looking naked as you first explore the world of small land it will give you mild protection against the cold with a maximum of nine but that's not going to keep you warm really at night time and definitely not in winter you can see durability is 100 each then we've got the light armor set this actually does give you some protection it also increases your movement speed each piece will give you 2 plus movement speed, with the chest piece and the leggings actually giving you protection as well. All three pieces, 90 durability. So the idea is that you'll run around a little bit quicker while wearing these. For them cold nights, you definitely want to get hold of the padded set. Each piece is going to give you cold protection of 9, and that should be just about enough to stave off the cold in the harshest of winters, and certainly throughout the night. Although pretty much no armor set will protect you against storms, you will have to use some sort of healing item to survive and have full health. Each piece would also give you protection of one, and the durability on it is better as well, at 110 each. Obviously the first armor set you begin the game with, and the other two you'll find with Herm. It will cost 42 fiber to go ahead and craft the padded set, and again 42 fiber to craft the light set. Personally, I'd go for the padded ones as they're going to offer you cold protection. Obviously, Hearn is at the very start of the game. You can't miss him as you come out of the cave. The first set to offer a mask is the stone set. These will also give you cold protection, but not as much as the padded. A grand total of 12 were in the full set. The mask will give you one protection, with the rest of the pieces giving you two. So seven protection overall. This does come also with piercing resistance. So that's a 12 piercing resistance total. But it does come with a negative. You're going to be 2% slower for each piece that you're wearing. So again, 8% slower movement speed. The durability is pretty good. In fact, it's one of the highest in the game, even compared to some of the end game ones. 170 each piece. You'll find these with Kalev, and again, he's pretty close to the spawn just across the waterway. So you'll need 40 stone total to craft this set. You'll also need 21 fiber and eight resin. I kind of like the stone plates, and to be honest, it's not too much of a difference compared to wearing just some of the regular other upgraded armors in terms of movement speed. So the next set of armors are more increasingly difficult to get. The primal set also gives you lots of cold protection, 36 overall total, nine apiece. It will give you 11 protection overall, and it will also give you 12 blunt protection too. Its movement speed is pretty slow though, just like the stone set, minus two for each piece. So eight total. You learn this set by speaking to Scardi in the south of the map. To craft this set, you're going to need 16 pieces of insect fur, 10 bones, and 18 herptile hide. So you will have to kill a bunch of geckos. You can also try and kill lizards and some of the toads, but they're going to be much harder to defeat. And insect fur, you get a ton of it by killing bees and wasps, as well as maybe some hornets. Also from Scardi is the chitin set. You will need an absolute ton of chitin to craft this. I kind of dig it. You get free cold protection with each piece again, and 13 protection overall. So 12 max edged resistance, but also 3% slower for each piece. Durability is 160. To craft it, you're going to need 40 pieces of chitin. That is no easy feat. You'd also need 9 insect fur and 8 herptile leather. So that means you need to cure the herptile hide at a tannery to make the actual leather itself. So you'd have to kill a whole ton of soya beetles or the green beetles as well as a bunch of geckos too. And again, lots of bees and lots of wasps. Next up we've got the spider silk armor set and it looks absolutely fantastic. It's going to help increase your mobility but it's quite light on protection. It's quite hard to get hold of as well but it does look pretty cool. So this will give you some cold protection, again only 12. Protection though, you will get 20 out of it. You also get 12 pierce resistance. 
and you do get two plus movement speed, so eight total. With durability of 150, which isn't too bad. Possibly one of the tougher ones to actually go and get the hold of the recipe. You have to find the Sandra in the swamps. She's right in the top left corner of the swamp area. It's also one of the most complicated recipes. You'll need 18 silk thread. Again, made at the tannery. Nine herptile hide, not made at the tannery. So don't do the mistake that I have done a bunch of times crafting the leather. You just need the hide. You also need four chitin and three spider heads. The fun stuff really begins though when you start to craft your bee armor set. This is probably going to be the first set you make that you'll be able to use a glider. So again, once you craft this set, I do believe you may then have to attach the wings afterwards. So you can grit this armor set without actually the wings. Get pretty fast mobility as well. Top tip while running around, spam the jump button and you'll get across the land much quicker. It does use up your stamina bar as well, but don't panic. Just because it runs out, you're not going to suddenly drop like a stone. Instead, you will just guide slowly down. So they are okay, but I definitely would like the ability to be able to hover upwards just a little bit more. You can, of course, mix and match any of the armor sets. So you can wear just the wings with any other armor, but I'm hoping one day they might allow us to put wings on any armor chest piece. It's a pretty bog standard, 12 cold protection. 20 protection just like the spider silk stuff you get 12 edge resistance the durability is 150 for the helmet and the regal plates and only 140 for the greaves and the van braces it's great for summer and spring gliding around they're quick and nimble but come the colder weather this and the spider set may not be good enough to withstand the actual temperatures and again it's another one that you can need a ton of chitin for 30 chitin, chitin, see, I can say it right sometimes. You'll also need three bee heads, 15 textile patches, and you'll need 10 insect wings plus five herptile leather. Pretty expensive and time consuming getting all of that. I personally would go after the stone set to make sure you aim to get this one as soon as possible. In terms of the map, it's relatively the easiest one to get as well. Plenty of geckos on the beach, and Tristana's not too far away. So next up is the Formic armor set. It looks pretty badass. Pretty much black ant armor. Cold protection is 12 again, but it jumps up quite a bit more now in terms of overall. You get 24 protection now. Also, it's really good for blunt resistance. Three plus per piece, so 12 blunt resistance. And durability is 140 for each one. To craft this set, you need to find Mermech. He's just to the slight northwest, and this one really is a tough one to make though. You just need one ant head, and you need a bunch of fiber string, 15 fiber string in fact total. You also need nine herptile leather. You also need four iron ingots. The hardest and toughest resource to get out of them all is the heavy chitin, 21 pieces. That means you're gonna have to take on some of the more tougher creatures if you wanna get any of the drops of the heavy. Cockroaches are probably your best bet. Next up, we've got the Bone Helm set. Again, really good for protection and also one of the best ones for winter as this is gonna give you pretty much all the protection you need against the cold. Each piece is worth six cold protection, making it one of the better ones in the game at 24 total. You also get 25 protection overall with the bone plate in chest piece one more than the rest and you get extra piercing resistance as well, plus three for each piece. So 12 total. There are no real negatives listed either, and the durability though is 150. So you would assume you'd have some slowdown bonus, but nope, it's pretty good. And of course that can also be found with Mermeg. It is another one though that relies on a lot of heavy chitin. In fact, probably the highest in the game at 42 pieces. Generally, you're lucky to get two pieces a drop from certain creatures, so that is a hell of a lot of cockroaches you're gonna have to kill. You'll need 15 textile patches as well, 15 fiber string, and a ton of bones, 12 bones in fact. On top of all that, you'll need three ant heads as well as nine ball ant mandibles. Little top tip, you will be able to make heavy chitin yourself. That's pretty expensive. Then regular chitin, one clay mortar, and one charcoal. That's incredibly expensive. So truly one of the late game armors now, the Iron Wings set. Obviously you've got the gliding wings, which always make it one of the best, and it offers the best protection, but it is grindy to get hold of all the stuff for it. 
Not great for winter though, the cold protection on it is only 3 each, so again 12 total, but you get 29 overall protection wearing this, with each piece 7, with the chest piece being 8. You also get edge resistance of plus 3 for each piece as well, so 12 total, and the helmet's worth 150 durability, 140 for the rest. I was a little bit disappointed though that the wings don't offer a significant upgrade. I figured maybe the B-Armor set was designed by that way so that you would maybe want to upgrade to the next set. But in my testing it looks like they offer no extra benefit compared to having the B-Armor set other than just that extra protection for wearing them. So yeah, it would be nice if they do give the wings a bit of a buff and make it even more incentive to go and upgrade. Of course, that extra protection should be enough, but if you're gonna have better wings, then make them actually something better to use. So these you can find by going over to Knock, all the way over, pretty much close to the Sandra, but in the broken highway or road area. So overall, you don't need too many refined resources once you get that iron, and hopefully by now you'll have a lot of the other ingredients. Six heavy kiting. 10 iron ingots, which may be some of the biggest expense there. 8 charcoal. You'll also need 3 insect fur, and you will need 1 sapphire wing. Relatively less grindy in terms of killing overall different creatures. But them sapphire wings do make up for that though. You will have to kill one of the black hornets that lives in the far, far northwest. If I remember rightly through my time playing, I'm pretty sure this is the set that you craft. And then Nock will give you another quest revealing the Black Hornet and telling you to go ahead and get the wings so that she can attach them onwards. So the best armor in the game is probably the healer set. Although there is some caveats with that. It is going to give you regenerative healing over time. It is one of the toughest armors to get as you might imagine. And yeah, you probably won't be getting this until you pretty much complete the game. It offers six cold protection each. So it's going to be great during the winter. It doesn't actually offer the best protection overall though with only five per piece, so 20 max. But as you can see, it's got health regeneration. Now it is quite a tiny bit, but it definitely helps a lot. And on top of that, it's got incoming poison. It reduces by 3% for each piece as well. Flip side is the durability is not as great either. 150 for all of them, except the mask, which is 160. So if we take some damage and then we'll show you how quickly it refills, you can clearly see I'm now starting to regenerate my health. It's around four seconds per beat. So again, it will take us some time. And once you've actually had a full meal, that will go up even quicker. But yeah, it will regenerate. That combined with the poison resistance means you could probably get away with not having to have as many different types of poison on you, because normally you need antidotes as well as the resistance ones. So great for taking on the spiders in the swamp and hornets, and pretty much still good enough to take on most of the other creatures as long as you can take some time away to either heal, or you know that if you go all in kamikaze, you'll have time afterwards to go ahead and heal up full health. To craft it, you're going to need to go all the way over to Tahula, and absolutely, it's the grindiest armor to get. You need 16 bark, which you can get on the coastlines or in this swamp, 24 fiber string that you get from the loom, 20 textile patches that you also get from the loom, 26 refined wood, 12 blood sacks that you can only get from mosquitoes that appear at night in the swamp. And on top of all that, you also need 12 greater health elixirs. Really do feel like they've just gone a bit overboard. The jump from the grind is incredible. Yes, I know it might be that end game armor, but that is a lot of work. Why? Because you need to kill a whole bunch of the toads. In fact, you need to kill at least 12 of them because you need 12 toad flesh to go ahead and make the 12 greater health elixirs you need. So you will be spending a lot of time in the swamp trying to get all these armor sets. So definitely go ahead and craft the legs and the arms, as this will still help you with healing and the incoming poison, and then spend more time getting them resources in the swamp, basically. There's pretty much only two places the swamps spawn, as far as I know. Just around here, and over on this corner here. And as I said, you'll see mosquitoes appear at night time all over. And I'm pretty sure you don't actually get the big... I'm pretty sure you don't get that healing potion until you've gone and defeated the spider matriarch. I'm pretty sure when you go to Tahula first, she'll ask you to bring a greater health healing potion. And that's when you might get the recipe for it. And then, yeah, you have to afterwards go and search it out. So, yeah, good luck getting this one. Definitely a sign that you have grinded and really love this game if you manage to get this armor set. 
So there we go, that is the run in order of what I think is the best armor sets. The Iron Wing set does give you the most protection as just a base armor, but the ability to heal and anti-poison, but the ability to heal makes this one I think better. Flip side of that of course though is that none of these armor sets are that great without at least having the chest piece glider as it really does help a lot get around the map. Even when you're not flying, just to be able to spam jump a little bit and go a little bit quicker is something that really speeds things up too.